This is a late 1940s, early 1950s Ford AM car radio. At least that's what I'm going to assume. I couldn't find any service data on this. Uh, it's actually someone else's project. You can see it's full of Loctal tubes. And usually when I see Loctal tubes, I um, always think 1948. I don't know why, but that seems to me about when these things were popular. Anyway, this is another person's uh, project, and they asked me to take a look. And it's been sitting here, and I didn't have much time, but now I'm sort of in quarantine, so I have a minute. I went to Tombstone, Arizona to explore some abandoned mines with friends of mine. And um, just got a really nasty old-school flu bug. It's really wiped me out. This is, of course, this is a zen made by Zenith. So I'm kind of staying away from everybody. But let's see what we can do with this. Looks like it's a, what, a six-tube set. One, two, three, four, five, six. Vibrator. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to see if the vibrator runs. If the vibrator does not run, we will probably abort. Because this is not mine, and usually what I would do is cut the vibrator open or peel the bottom of it open and clean the contacts and get it to run. But I'm not going to do that on this uh, another person's vibrator. They can open their own vibrator and clean it themselves. I'm really not all sure what's going on with this. Looks like something is broken here. That feels like it was a, a fuse holder. And that looks like it went through there. So where'd the other side of it connect? Actually, I'm not quite entirely sure what... Maybe this was a, a socket for power to come in. Maybe this was the power inlet. Although we got two other plugs here on the side of the radio. I did try and find the service data on this, and Sam's did cover a lot of these, but not this one. At least I couldn't find... This one might be too old for Sam's, I don't know, but that would definitely be helpful. So I'm thinking this right here... I'm assuming this is going to be positive ground, and then this would be your, your choke your input filtering choke this thing so I'm assuming this is where power would come in or this would be ground and this would be positive 6 volt positive ground okay I got 6 volts dialed in here let's see what happens Ooh, we have a vibrator running. Let me see if I can put this on. I don't know if you can hear the vibrator over all these birds, but I'll push the phone up against it here. So that's a really good starting place. Ideally, that capacitor and those two resistors should be replaced first before anything else. I kind of learned that on my last tube car radio video. Well, I, I knew about the, the uh, 
suppression capacitor there that keeps the points from burning in the vibrator but those two resistors right there also but he went ahead and recapped the rest of it so let's check it out some more i believe this is the correct place because when i'm hooked here the power switch does work But I don't think the tube filaments are getting any power because it's been on for five minutes and all the tubes are cold. Okay, I think I see what's going on here. I think this is the filament feed right here. So let's get that hooked up to the B+. So this is the rectifier tube 7y4 and um, yeah I mean that's definitely it so we don't have any B plus coming out of this and I was looking at this and I noticed that the person that was working on this kind of yanked the filter can out and the filter can is just floating it's not the case is not even grounded so this i just moved this and it popped off so i want to just check real quick and see if the, there's uh check and see if there's voltage here for the heater i think i might have discovered something on accident here you know how i said this capacitor broke loose while i was kind of tracing the wires so i'm measuring the b plus right now it's zero I lift this capacitor out, goes to 245 volts. Now you don't want to run this system without that capacitor because that keeps the points from burning up in the vibrator. So is this sucker shorted? Is this what was keeping the B plus? This capacitor is in fact shorted. Totally shorted, like zero ohms. I wonder if this is the problem he was having, why he couldn't get it to work. That's interesting, the one capacitor he didn't change. Let's see, 0 .008. I'm kind of like in brain fog mode right now. What would that... I don't know, i got to think about that for a while. Point stand by I'm just gonna sound stupid I, I'm real brain fog right now so it looks like if we put if we could get 2.015 and put them in series because this is a 1500 volt capacitor that would get us close or we could just say this thing is a mess and we just want to resurrect it and get it to work. So how about just the 0 0.01, which, you know, that would probably be pretty close to a 0 0.008. I think I might have got lucky here. I found a uh, 822 at 1250 volt. This should be 0 0.008. Two. I wish I had my component identifier to verify that. Or you have your choice of a 103 at 2 kilovolts, which 103 should be 0 0.01, so that would be 0 0.002 higher. I think I'm going to go with that since we're just testing this thing. The leads weren't quite long enough but because this other thing is basically just a piece of wire I can just kind of put it in series with the shorted one so that's in circuit I'm gonna take it out you'll see what happens if I pop it out here the voltage goes up quite a bit that's without the other filaments powered okay with everything hooked up got the capacitors in there I soldered that filament wire on. 
We're at 185 volts on the B plus and we have smoke. We have smoke. Can everybody see the smoke? Living in the age of smoke. Take a hit. So actually after looking at this with a flashlight, it looks like it's been recapped with modern caps stuffed in the old can. And I believe it was smoking. There's a like a resistor down underneath this that you really cannot see. Yeah, you know, this this is a mess. I have I have no idea what's going on with this. There's obviously a short somewhere. I have no idea what this is about. Uh hey, what's interesting is when I powered it up, the voltage came up to 350, then it dropped to 260. It sat at 260 for a while. Then all of a sudden it just dropped to 280 like something shorted and it started smoking. So I'm going to say that this is like any AA5 radio where there's two filters and then a resistor between them. And whatever's on the resistor side of that supply is shorted. Maybe it's this. Because right now... Yeah, right now it's shorted. Zero volts there. So it happens is it's safe to take this cheap ass meter to ohms. Or did I just cremate it? I don't think it's happy with this. I'm measuring across this blue capacitor and on diode check 237 millivolts really in a tube circuit 237 ohms really I mean I guess it's possible maybe I should pull it out now I'm measuring the voltage it looks like it's trying to push some voltage across that capacitor Okay, well, it does not appear that that was it, so no lucky twice in one day. Okay, so we got a short somewhere, and it's causing this resistor to smoke. And this here is not of my doing. I did not restuff this can, and I love it. I've seen this before where people try and solder to aluminum with PBSN and if you can see this lead tin does not stick to aluminum you cannot solder to a capacitor can period okay and I'm trying to pull that and I, I can't and I don't know if I want to really tear into somebody else's work and piss them off give it back to them all torn apart something they did that they thought was great you know it could just very well be a function of my current state of brain fog with this stupid flu thing but this at this point, I cannot believe that someone would not know that regular electronic solder does not bond at all to aluminum. Does not adhere in any way to a aluminum capacitor can. And it, it just... I mean, everybody needs to learn, and this is a younger guy, and he's learning, but... Uh, this is really should be like 
just kind of common knowledge at this point. It, it just will not bond. I mean, you could drill holes or do whatever you want in the aluminum and use as much flux as you want. It ain't going to stick. So restuffing cans is fine. It's great. It's the aesthetically appealing way to do it. Uh, in this case, I probably would have just used a terminal strip and cut the old leads off the old capacitor. But just for reference, if you look at this, you'll notice the can is aluminum. And underneath here is a ring, a steel ring that's crimped in. And where this is soldered right here, that's steel. This ring, the solder lug ring, is steel. And the aluminum is crimped over it. So if you're going to cut one of these cans open, what I usually do is cut it right about here. Gut it out. Leave the steel ring in. Run all your leads through the bottom. Attach all your negatives to your your steel ring here on the outside Then when you put it back together use some aluminum uh, Air conditioning tape aluminum metal tape and you'll never even notice it But yeah, you cannot solder to the body of this. That's why they crimp this metal steel ring in here See it's a 256 now It just dropped to 183. Something just shorted. Maybe that's not... Maybe that's not one of those capacitors. I'm watching what I believe is the secondary here. Uh, let's see. Yeah, that's the primary. This is the secondary. This should be on the other side of that resistor that's smoking. Oh, and there it goes. It just shorted. What the hell? I might be wrong with this capacitor thing, and I don't want to be wrong. What is that? After it warms up for a minute, it shorts. That's almost like a tube because it's very consistent. I pulled one of the 7B6... Um, When that one, let me try and pull this one out. Well, I can't do this. It's not that one. Okay, I believe I found it. It's this tube, 7C5. It's actually pretty warm, too, right now. So the radio is running. Uh, we're at 211 volts, no smoke. I'm going to put this back in. Okay, there it's in. It's warming up. Interesting, it won't misbehave now. Oh, yes, it will. Oh, yes, it will. Yep, that tube is gone. I wonder what that is. I wonder what a 7C5 is. And you can tell the stupid socket's not making good connection either. But it's definitely, it's definitely got internal issues. Oh, let's get this sucker fired up and smoking. So my apologies for the hasty conclusion on the filter repacking. Even though it does need to be redone because solder won't stick to aluminum, my... 
my cognitive ability right now is more on the presidential level, so it's not firing on all cylinders. And uh, so we got a bad tube, and I bet this thing would work. 7C5, I wonder what that is. It looks like a power tube. I took a look and I currently do not have a replacement for that tube that's shorting. Oh God, it sounds like I need a cigarette. Can I get a cigarette, please? <clears throat> Stand by. Anyway, I don't have that tube that's shorting available. I can't access it right now. So what I've done is I've hooked a speaker up. I've hooked an antenna up. We're going to power this up. I'm going to watch that voltage. Um, we're going to see if we could get this thing to sing. I'm not the one that disconnected all this stuff. Buzzing is probably due to the failed solder joints on that aluminum can. Let me turn it over. The damn tube. Let's see if we can hear the converter. I'm just on uh, one megahertz. I'm gonna tune the car radio now. See if the... Converter's running in the uh, car radio. It doesn't appear to be. The IF in these is 262, so I imagine it would be 262 plus whatever the frequency you were tuning in, so. One megahertz would be like 1262. So yeah, it, it does not appear the converters running in the car radio. Actually, looking at this it looks like we got all the wrong tubes in the set and I I think I initially got this wrong I thought this had a push-pull audio output I do not believe it does there was another one of these I worked on that had a, a push-pull audio output with two 6v6s and this one doesn't this I, I believe this Right here, the tube that is shorting intermittently is the audio output tube. Um, so according to this right here, this is supposed to be, you're, you're looking at it like, like this. So this is supposed to be a 7B8 right here. To me, it says 7A7 on it. That is a 7B6. According to this, it's supposed to be those two. These two are supposed to be 7A7s. That is a 7A7. 
That is a 7B6. So there's supposed to be a 7B6 over here. How the hell did this happen? So where is the 7B8? That's got to be the converter. So yeah, 7B8 is your heptode converter. So this is, tube is absent from this set. It was replaced by someone stuck a 7B6 in there. Not even close. So in order to even maybe try and think this thing might work, I need a 7B8. Just to note, I'd like to apologize for the lovely cigarette voice and uh, kind of the roadside repair video here, not with my usual equipment. But uh, this makes it a little bit more fun and more challenging and um, definitely keeps it interesting on my part. You know, hopefully I can find the tube. If not, then I'm hosed. I located a 7B8. I just love the class of these boxes. So classy. Anybody have a charcoal filtered clean air cigarette? I think I could use a charcoal filtered clean air cigarette, please. Okay, let's see if we have any the oscillator here yep there it is see it that's me tuning the dial here So that's the signal from that converter transistor running, I mean, that converter tube running, the Pentagrid 7B8. Yeah, but the audio output tube is becoming a big problem now, it's shorting. Okay, let me hook the antenna up. I got, this is the plate of the IF tube and I have it just wrapped around here and I'm set to 262. And it's kind of working, but the problem I'm having is that capacitor can not being properly grounded. And I got the audio output tube out and I'm just trying to see if we're getting any kind of front end action through the IF. Okay, I got it working. The front end and the IF are working. I'm moving. I don't have much of an antenna on it, so it's not working well, but... So the front end is working and the IF is working. Go ahead. Do you copy? Um, yeah, so right now I'm having trouble getting this thing 
to engage. I press the automatic button. Look at that. Quite sure how this thing is supposed to work. Interesting. But then the then the tuning turning the tuning knob doesn't do anything. Let's see what's going on with this. Oh, I got this crap. I gotta. Hello, good afternoon. My name is Dina. Which can I have the plus up speaking with? This is Daniel. Daniel. Yes. Hi Daniel, how are you doing today? I'm not grunting, just a around the layer more. How about you? Man, they just don't take it anymore. They're just no fun at all. It's like off with the head. There's like no tolerance for anything. No compassion for the sick. You horrible people, you rotten hell. Okay, I got a real antenna on it now, and it seems to be... I mean, I guess. Now there will be no classes as well from Wednesday, January 19th through February, January 21st. This affects all district programs from the Office of Child Development, K-12 through schools, and Culver City Adult School. And for the very first time today, people in L.A. got to meet and hear from the new school super... So I was able to get just a whisper, just a whisper of audio out of the speaker because the audio output tube is bad. Wants it to escalate. Well, it also seems like they're kind of Okay, let's see if we can peek the IF out, out here. Thinking like this is something Vladimir Putin is good at. Yes, that's absolutely true. Vladimir Putin very famously served in the KGB during the Soviet era. And during his over 20 years in office, we've seen an increase in these sorts of disinformation campaigns. And that's something that I study. And this Hold one we on. study, this is a little bit more kinetic and on the ground. But we've seen this bellicose rest in border okay, talking I... about things like, uh, I don't know, you know, um, poison attacks, poison gas attacks, saying that Ukraine was the instigator here when it's Ukraine that has had its territory, uh, you know, changed and annexed. About Obviously, only uh, Vladimir Putin knows what is going through Vladimir Putin's uh, mind. <laughs> uh, and, but we've asked experts for the past few weeks this question, we'll ask you. Uh, what do you think he's up to? Is this a, a huge bluff, or do you think he's actually going to go ahead and find some free fight incursion into, say, eastern Ukraine? Well, you know, I'm a little bit worried because this morning there was... Made it a lot a stronger. ...of many uh, Ukrainians. Um, I think they were set up again to create this for an invasion. And the idea here, in my opinion, is to bolster Putin's popularity at home. Whenever he has these adventures abroad, he tends to shore up his popularity at home. Now, I think Mr. Putin would be wise to remember that as Russian soldiers are coming home in body bags and as... Uh, you know, the economic toll uh, goes through sanctions and the... Whatever short-term support he... Well, I think the problem is now we got to get the wire off of here. IF was way out of alignment. Um, okay, now I've just got it sitting here, not directly connected, so. 
maybe I can This audio output tube is exhibiting no shorts, no grid leakage, and good emissions on the tester. And I've had it baking on here for quite a while. So uh, maybe it's time to look somewhere else with the audio output circuit. Because the audio that I was able to get through it was very minimal and very distorted. So... Maybe there's another issue there. We'll have to take a look at that tomorrow, do voltage checks. Day number three, I want to <clears throat> check the voltages on the audio output tube. I've got the tube layout here. Feeling a little better each day. I um, think there was a misdiagnosis, which was the people I was with had gone out as soon as they had symptoms and got tested and came up negative well i think that might have been too premature uh, as time has gone on and more of the people i was hanging out with have fallen ill it does appear that maybe it's uh the designer bug <clears throat> and i um a couple days ago i started treating myself the joe rogan way and kind of turned it around overnight so I've been definitely improving ever since then uh, more and more of the systems of my body are coming back online and starting to function properly which is a good thing because when I started this video a whole bunch of stuff wasn't working and I'm not talking about the radio and as soon as I start down to get going, it starts raining, so... Alright, we got... Negative 6 volts on the control grid, that's probably good. Okay, remember we were only getting just very low levels of stored audio out of this thing. Could barely hear it with my ear up against the speaker. So on the screen, we got 192. And on the plate, we got negative seven. So there's something going on there. Um, is the audio output transformer open? That seems very odd. Huh. What are we at here? Did Negative, yeah, negative six there. Two volts on the um, cathode. Voltages don't look right. I mean, I love working on high voltage tube electronics in the rain, you know. I don't think this is going to lighten up, but I, I do really feel like the audio output transformer is either not connected to B plus or open, so... Yeah. Okay, here's what we got. This is just a, like a filament transformer. Uh, 120 volt to 
12 volt center tapped. You can use these, you know, pretty much any transformer like this as an audio output transformer for testing. I wouldn't run it long term. Um, I have it connected. I have one side of it connected to the plate. This yellow wire here is connected to B+. Uh, let's power her up. There she goes. And I will connect. The speaker is connected to the secondary. Okay. 240 volts there. Actually got a little hum from the speaker. Probably need to put an antenna on it. That might be kind of mentally evaluatable. Let me do that. I think I hear something already. It's kind of cool. Oh, it was working while it was warming up. I give it a little less antenna. This thing has issues. Oh, maybe I need to ground that capacitor can again. See if I can finger it here. There we go. Several beaches to be shut down. Yep, that capacitor, the aluminum can is not making good contact. In a separate motion, the board directed county departments to aid in the sanitation district's investigation into the Carson spill. Board Chair Supervisor Holly Mitchell said a video inspection of the pipe in question was done. Every rabbi at the time of Christ. I was using one credit card account to roll over into another credit card account, and it was snowballing. If you're in oh, well, you're a good American. Um, chef, you are now the menu maker for Waikoko, which is at the Western Catapali. Okay, if you lost yeah, made, they had me on a track. They uh, not thirty percent, but forty two percent to just break even. Oh. 
Okay, so either the audio output transformer is open, and that could be why that tube was wigging out shorting because tubes do not like screen voltage with no plate voltage. That that power tubes don't like you to do that. Maybe for 20 seconds, but they don't like it. So either maybe the power transformers, the audio output transformers got an open secondary or the secondary is so not hooked up somewhere in this mess. I'm not going to investigate that because it, it needs uh, the capacitor straightened out anyway. So We saw this Pittsburgh team couldn't block anything against Minnesota. Remember that? That's cars with a K! Hey, it's Dean Gregory. This week on Unsolved, the death of Mark Leonard, the father of it. Wait, Mark this one hurts because I hate you. It's quiet because the power, the audio output transformer I'm using is a gross impedance mis mitch, 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 mitch match. Mitch match. Hey, mitch match. It's a mitch match. Well, you know, it's all about this right here. So there she is. She sings again. <laughs> they put him back in corner and pivotal one of those. Blah, 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 blah. I mean, Sounds like the, the Simpkins, you know? But listen to me carefully. Cats are just as affectionate as dogs. A lot of people don't understand how cats show their affection. By kneading, they show their affection. By cuddling, they show their affection. But just the fact if your cat is following you around from room to room to room, that's a way your cat is showing affection. It's further along. Refinancing can add to the general financial health of your property and add to your loan to value ratio should be You know the good thing about this is, is the vibrator's good. That's the one good thing about this set. I mean uh, the rest of it's there but the vibrator is good. That's the that's the happy happy part running vibrating vibrator buzzing making happy so since we're in this kind of weird stormy thing and i've just been quarantined and trapped i decided i'd drive up on the back of uh the palace verdes peninsula just kind of in this rainy foggy thing and you're looking at LA there that's the South Bay I guess I think it's kind of hard to keep this thing focused in this low light but there's a boat I gotta be careful because there's a cliff right in front of me about 10 feet. If I go off that, I'm going down 300 feet. But there's a there's a boat on the water. But yeah, you get some kind of really creepy mystical stuff up here
How the hell did cars get down there? This is White's Point. Ruining the natural sound with your car stereo. This back here is White's Point Park, and there are bunkers in those hills that were used to defend this area. What, the Second World War? I don't know if I wanna try and hike up there in the middle of the night or not. This is already, should have somebody Sort of an OPSEC violation, as long as I keep my situa situational awareness up, I guess. Which means I need to be quiet and not... I need to be quiet and not talk. bunkers you should be able to just google the white point white point park bunkers this is a trip It's like they just scrubbed it. According to this, it's still here. One of them, there were a whole bunch of them. But I'm not, I have no clue. It's looking out over the ocean. So when I was in high school, it was legend, at least, you know, among the kids that the cults had worshipped in the in the bunkers here in the 70s, 60s, and 70s. And so, me and a friend made it an absolute mission to get into them. And it took us weeks of working our magic. And we finally got in. And... Um, what we found were long halls with rooms below and off to the side. And um, one of the rooms was completely painted with some of the most amazing, you know, say vulgar artwork. And um, I still have of course, this was back in the 35 millimeter days, you know, and all I had was a little Canon pocket camera. And uh, I have all those pictures of um, the artwork of the cults. And this whole area was the Blamby Blants be making the dog go bark out back here too.
Jesus, that's unsettling. Anyway, um, yeah, the artwork was pretty impressive, and there used to be a whole host of bunkers back in this area. They used to be where the Trump golf course is now. Of course, when Trump bought it, he took all of them out. And they were all linked together with pipes to communicate. So you'd talk, you'd talk to each other through the pipes that link the different bunkers and areas together. Yeah, I don't know where it is. I'm not opposed to coming back here, but uh, rather come back here with the right equipment. I was hoping it'd be a little bit more rainy and foggy and creepy than it is. Come back here with thermal and night vision. That way I got some force multiplication over the just the those who might be hiding up in these hills. This is what happens when you go into quarantine. You start doing stuff like this because there's just nothing to do. Fixing car radios that should have been dumped. But anyway, that's what I need to do to protect everybody around me because I can probably handle something that a lot of them can't. So not to disappoint, I dug up some of the 35 millimeter prints of the bunkers and this goes back, this was in the early 90s. So I think this is kind of how we got in, something like this. And uh, of course these are not me, they, you know, I had the camera at the time, but it's our, our victory dance getting in there and that's what it looks like underground. And let's see, that's another shot of kind of what it looks like underground. And then, of course, back in the 90s, you didn't have high intensity LEDs. You didn't have any good lighting, really. So we took and we lined up candles down through one of the bunkers and took a little time exposure. And that's what that was. And then the one room that had all the artwork in it, let's see. And I take the I take the muffler off my car to impress my stupid friends. Uh that's this room right here. And some of the artwork is sort of offensive. And there's 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 a lot more. There's a lot more down there. At least I hope it's still there. I hope they didn't sanitize it and scrub it and get rid of it. You know, society is just not as open and free and young people aren't free to explore the way we were, which is kind of sad. But anyway, that's a sort of a quick look at what, what used to be there in the 90s.